Well, from the pages of MikeHuckabee.com, which is home of my totally, and I mean totally free, newsletter. It's delivered twice daily to your email inbox. It's right now time to look back on another week that rivals the best television soap operas. There was dysfunction, acrimony, and circus antics in the nation's capital from political bureaucrats breathing their last gasp of the impeachment hoax. <laughs> President Trump was acquitted in the Senate on Wednesday. No thanks to Senator of Utah Mitt Romney, the lone Republican dissenter who voted to convict the president. Now with Republican friends like these, who needs Democrat enemies? <laughs> Well, Romley, supposedly acting on his conscience and his oath to God, sounded as if he could have been one of those Democrat House managers chastising the president for imaginary crimes. Any Trumpers are turning Romney into a hero, thumbing their noses at those who took due process and the rules of evidence seriously, and they concluded that the House just didn't prove its case. One excellent point made by a caller to Rush Limbaugh's show has been making the rounds. If Romney believed just a week ago that there wasn't enough evidence to convict Trump without additional witnesses, how can he vote to convict in the Senate when there have been no additional witnesses? Yeah, that's a mystery to me too. Yeah. So Romney told Chris Wallace that the worst thing to ever happen to him politically has already happened. That was losing the presidency in 2012. Well, after this self-serving stunt, I think the worst thing to ever happen to the country would be if he'd actually become president. <laughs> now, Mitt's going to go down in history as the first senator ever to vote to convict and remove a president of his own party. Time will tell if that turns out to be the worst thing to ever happen to him politically. Well, it's time to find out what is on your mind from our My Two Cents at TBN.TV inbox. This comes to us from Jane out of Spring, Texas. She says she's got a tough review for the Speaker of the House, and she writes this, Like so many viewers, I was disgusted and appalled by pugnacious Pelosi's disrespectful behavior. If she cannot shelve her personal agendas long enough to at least honor the office, if not the man, then she needs to get off the podium. Trump has achieved what no president has done since Truman. He's made it okay to have faith and values again in our beloved country. Obviously, Pelosi has neither. Well, Jane, I don't disagree with what you said. I thought it was uh, a moment that deserves a certain level of decorum. I know there's been much said, well, Trump didn't shake her hand. If you watch the video closely, two things you'll note. He didn't shake Pence's hand either. Nobody seems to be upset about that. And I'm not sure he saw Nancy Pelosi's hand because if you watch the tape, he was turning away as she started putting it forth. But there was plenty of time for her to shake his hand after the speech, but she couldn't because her hands were busy tearing it in pieces. That's the real story there. We get this for also from Texas. This is Trent, and he's got a legal question. He said Pelosi destroyed an official government document in front of the entire nation. The law is clear on government records retention. Is Pelosi exempt from the law, sort of like Hillary and the emails? <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, Trent. Technically, you could say she broke the law. The records are supposed to be retained. Nobody can throw away, tear up, and she did it in a very vivid way. But there are other records that are copies, so it wasn't like she tore up the only version of it. So will she be charged? Absolutely not. Uh, it's not going to happen, but it's a good point to make for people who talk about the rule of law. Maybe we should remind her of that. Now we get this from Raynell in Colorado. Regarding AOC's remark that the Medal of Freedom has been cheapened and that it's for highly regarded people of integrity, let's be reminded Obama gave out 123 of them and one was to Robert De Niro. <laughs> hey, what a stand-up guy he is. And she adds, I say that with sarcasm. Well, the fact is, the Medal of Honor, the Medal of Freedom rather, is something the president has discretion to give. And I never complain when President Obama or President Bush or President Clinton or whoever gave out medals, maybe not to my favorite people, but that's their discretion. Here's my advice to AOC. AOC, if you really don't like the medals that this president is giving out, when you get a little older and you're old enough to run for president, why don't you do so? 
And if the country's crazy enough to elect you, you can give out your medals to whoever you doggone well want to. But in the meantime, just thank God that Trump honored someone of the significance of Rush Limbaugh and quit whining about it. Get over it. That's what I'll tell you. Finally, from my Twitter page, at GovMikeHuckabee comes this wry observation on the Iowa caucuses. The NOQ report online noted that even though Elizabeth Warren placed third in Iowa, she still took a licking in one county, Pocahontas County in <laughs> Iowa. I am not making it up. I'll bet the late night writers are gonna miss this completely, but it will not be lost here on the facts of the matter viewers, no sir. Our former claimer of Native American descent and acceptor of benefits that should have gone to indigenous people was not able to win Pocahontas County in Iowa. <laughs> Maybe that DNA test that she uh, took was, you know, the one that showed she was only one, one hundred, well, one thousandth and twenty-fourth Native American. Uh, maybe it just didn't help getting those Pocahontas votes. <laughs> and to all the people with hurt feelings and angry attitudes on both sides of the aisle from this week's political mayhem in Iowa and Washington, let me offer a thought that may offer you a little smile. The Democrats are the party of government activism, the party that says government can make you richer, smarter, taller, and get the chickweed out of your lawn. <laughs> Republicans are the party that says government doesn't work and then they get elected and prove it. <laughs> well, the good news is that November is closer than it was a week ago, and each of you, I don't care if you're liberal, conservative, or somewhere, maybe in between, you've got the chance to vote your conscience and affect the future of our government. If you're not registered, get it done. And if you are, study the issues and use your vote well. And until next time, these are the facts of the matter. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, then subscribe, and hit the notification bell below. Now, if you didn't like it, you ought to find a Ben Shapiro video to detox you with more facts. <laughs>